What's up guys, this is the Vinyl Casket. I am Nick. This is the home to the lamest taste. Never forget, never forget. Um, that's weird that that's not in the frame. Um, my hair is a mess. Ignore it. Uh, please do me a huge favor and follow, subscribe here on Twitch at Vinyl Casket and on YouTube at The Vinyl Casket. Drop a like and a comment. Let me know what's going on. Hit that bell. Uh, and follow my Instagram at Vinyl Casket and Vinyl Casket Comics. Uh, we'll be, that being said, we have a bunch of new stuff going on. Um, if you don't know the model, let me let you know. Um, it is... Hey, um, we pick them up, we read them, we review them. Uh, before we get into what I read this week, we're going to talk a little bit about two things that I got real quick. One came in the mail after a year pre-order and one was something that I picked up to complete us a, uh, a collection so I'm caught up when it comes out of hiatus in the next month or so I'm able or two months I'm able to read it from where it is uh if you know I did I got my something is killing the children uh hardcover book one I picked up volume four of the trade paperback which covers the five issues that came out after that book one ends uh, issue 15, so this is issue 16 to 20. 21 is coming out, I think, in March, maybe end of February. I can't remember. Uh, I have to read this, so this will catch me up completely. Really, really good construction. Uh, I was looking through this. I love the paper quality and the outer construction the, and the glue and everything about this that Boom Studios used. This is incredible. This is a re I used to collect strictly trade paperbacks growing up and some single issues of older like 80s 90s comics but i was getting a lot of recent stuff in trade paperbacks and catching up and reading uh, i did get some single issues but mostly it was a lot of trades um and all the marvel ones were really bad compared to this this is awesome um i really like this i will you will be seeing me get a lot more boom trades in the coming future um not to spoil anything. We also, after over a year, uh, close to a year of waiting, uh, the Alien original years, Omnibus, Volume Two, from Marvel. Oh, uh, so good. So I got probably for around my birthday last year. I got, which is February, by the way. I got Volume One. And I had pre-ordered this from Organic Price Books. I had bought both of them at the same time, thinking that this was coming out in the next couple of months. No, it just kept getting pushed back, or I didn't know what was going on. Uh, I even forgot until I got the email that this ship that I even ordered it. Um, and Volume 3 is announced, so I guess I'll wait a little bit closer to when that comes out before I buy it. I don't like having my money sit there uh, in limbo. But this is volume two of the original Dark Horse stuff. The way volume one was structured, it was really cool. There was lots of different like uh, side stories and weird knickknacks and like different kinds of things thrown in and mixed in. The order was really cool. Uh, this collects a lot of stuff. So um, it has the 20th Century Fox Studios um, logo in the back, which is really interesting since Disney, which owned Marvel, owns bought out fox i thought it would have the disney logo uh collecting alien rogues one through four alien labyrinth one through four alien colonial marines one through ten really excited to read that aliens salvation aliens music of the spears one through four alien stronghold one through four and then uh material taken from so these will be like little side stories taken out of these uh, like magazine style comics. Uh, Dark Horse Comics 3 through 5, 11 through 13, and 15 through 19. Previews 1993, 1 through 12. Previews 1994, the year I was born. Uh, number 1, an Alien Magazine 1992, 9 through 20. Um, so yeah, we're at the point of the early almost mid 90s of alien stuff so the first line collects like all the early stuff the original concept stuff all the things that came out when aliens first entered dark horse 
Um, and this is basically the continuation of that. And to give you a peek of what the actual hardcover looks like, and then we'll jump into the review real quick. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I'm trying to, really hard to find the middle. No, I'm nowhere near the middle. Whatever. Uh, you get the concept. There's a queen alien right here. Really sick. Um, I'm very excited and happy with how this came out. I was worried because of the way uh, Penguin Hair Pe Penguin Clearinghouse is shipping books that um, due to previous emails, I was expecting this book to be damaged. Um, and it wasn't. So I'm very excited about that. That is something to be excited about. Um, down there, so not to break the new turntable, which eventually I will do a review on once I play enough of my records and do a real run through of how cool this thing is. Uh, we have, starting with indies like we always do, we have from IDW issue 125 of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And you'll notice on the cover that it says Teenage Mutant Punk Frogs. This issue was amazing. So first off, cover art, awesome. Second off, artwork internally, great. Uh, the story we've been getting every issue about uh, Mutant Town and the, you know, the turtles trying to start their new life and help all these people that live there that got turned into mutants. The punk frogs show up. And just the altercation, the fight scene, the... Everything was just really fun. It was a really good story. It was a really good issue. Not a lot really happened, but it was a lot of a lot of fun, and that's really what matters. There was some stuff with the Triceratops alien race, and some character giving birth, and the um, Krang looking guys. Very interesting, weird stuff tied in, back and forth kind of story. I'm going to give it a solid uh, 8 out of 10. That was really good. Then moving on to the only image book I got this week, we have issue 5 of Primordial by Jeff Lemire. Uh, he has a bunch of new stuff coming out since he announced he's only doing indie stuff. Um, this was really cool. A lot of fun. Artwork here is super trippy, super interesting. Um, a lot of stuff is going on. The story, like nothing happens, but then a lot happens. Uh, you have this space, the space dog and the space monkeys. And there we've now hit like a time skip and we're in the future and a lot of weird stuff's going on. It was really interesting. The end threw me off. Um, I really enjoyed this. I'm going to give it a seven and a half out of 10. Uh, moving on to Marvel. So Marvel was the big pusher this week. Um, I haven't really had this much Marvel compared to DC since like 2019 when I got back into comics. So we're going to start off with uh, two Devil Reigns tie-ins. First is issue one of Villains for Hire. This is the new Thunderbolts. Uh, I was interested. I was very confused reading this because there was no US agent at all until the end. And I really like how that was introduced. It really fits his character. Um, I thought the whole eco-terrorists, like, attacking the Met Gala was really cool. The chemistry between these different villains was, like, spot on to how I would have characterized them. I thought it was good. Artwork was okay. Uh, I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. Um, Devil's Reign X-Men. This was really cool. Um, US Agent is leading the Thunderbolts in this issue, um, which is, you know, interesting. Um, but I also really just enjoyed, um, artwork and the flashback stories and how all these people, like Kingpin is trying to take down all these people with like dirt. Like he's trying to like expose all these people, like all these tie-ins basically come down to how is Kingpin trying to burn me? Uh, I know next week there's a Winter Soldier one. I want to get it. I might not get it. I might pick it up later down the road. Um, yeah, this is going to be uh, it was definitely better than Villains for. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Um, I like how uh, Electra's past was kind of tied into that also. 
and I like the way that the X Men were kind of handling it diplomatically. Dip diplomatically. Uh, issue fifteen of Strange Academy. Favorite thing about this cover is the way the Strange is like done, where it's like faded, but like it's supposed to look like mist. Really like that. Um, this is a solid continuation of the last issue last issue i hopped back into the series after giving up after issue like three uh, i hop back in i'm thoroughly enjoying this. this is a solid artwork solid story um i like the characterizations i know scotty young is doing some of these characters dirty but like i feel like he has like a reason for it and like it's gonna explain itself eventually and like it will matter some way somehow um, I'm going to give it a solid 7 out of 10. It was a really good issue. Um, Moon Knight issue 7. Awesome A cover. If you notice, a lot of my Marvel stuff is just A covers right now. My shop is restructuring how they're ordering. <coughs> Sorry about that. So they're having like a hard time getting variants. Because they don't know. They kind of they kind of like redid their whole like order structure. Of how much they're ordering each title. So now they're like just going off of like what they really need off of pre-orders. Plus like some stuff to fill the shelf because like it got a little slow. Uh, but they're redoing everything to restructure and try to get variants again. But this A cover was solid. Uh, this book is incredible. Who's the writer? McKay is... Dude, it's just... <sighs> He's such a badass. Like... Like, Moon Knight is just a badass, and this crew he's rolling with is a badass, and I don't know, like, super... Oh, I didn't put spoiler alert. I'll put it in the YouTube video, but this is going to be my first major spoiler. Yo, what is Black Panther doing? T'Challa is the reason why Tigra's there, but, like, Tigra and Moon Knight are, like, good friends from West Coast Avengers. I'm interested to see where that's going, I don't want it to go the way I think it's going to go, but like it's happening and there's nothing we can do about it. But everything else, story, art, I like how Moon Knight walks into this bar of villains. Like, I knew you guys are here the whole time. It isn't a secret. Yo, if you know who this guy is, Zodiac, you let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to take you all down. No problem. I don't care. I'll let you guys live. I'll let you guys drink. I don't care. But if you don't tell me who this guy is, if you know anything, I'm gonna take you down. Badass. Straight badass. 8 out of 10. Awesome book. Awesome series. It's only f 7 issues, so easily there should be a trade paperback coming out. I suggest getting it. I think it might have just came out last week. Um, issue 86 of Amazing Spider-Man. I have a lot to say about this. Uh, and I won't because I have a you know my Instagram review, which I haven't made yet. I will type out some stuff about this and there's things I want to say later down the road for another video. Um, I do think this is an okay story for the plot direction that it's been forced into the way this series started off. I really liked it. I thought I had a lot of potential and then we've slowly hammered our way into a direction that I thought still could have been okay, but we've now taken uh, a wrong turn and there is no way uphill because we are flying downhill at top speed um, because of the direction the story and this plot is going. And I don't necessarily think this is the best thing that we deserve as readers after a lot of struggles in the past with Spider-Man storylines kind of going awry. Um, strength from the path. I really would have liked this to make Ben Riley, the clone of Peter Parker, Spider Man, um, have a lot more substance and come back as Scarlet Spider. So we have two Spider titles instead of getting a Spider Man, Amazing Spider Man, four issues a month. I would have rather had a title just focused on him and a title just focused on that. Um, currently as it's happening in the Marvel Universe in modern time. Um, this was kind of a train wreck. Um, didn't like the artwork. Uh, don't like Beyond Corporation. Don't like the head of Beyond Corporation. Uh, Mac, uh, Maxine Danger? Think she's stupid. 
a lot of such stuff is happening. Um, I don't, I did like the therapist. Um, I do like the thing they're doing with Janine, the, the girlfriend, wife, fiance of Ben Riley. Um, I just don't like how they're doing Ben dirty kind of mostly. Yeah. They're doing him dirty. Uh, they build him up and they could have restructured him and made him cool. And like, it's like they're using beyond corporation as a plot device to ruin the character so that Peter Parker can come save the day now and be like, I'm Spider-Man again. I'm going to give it a five out of 10. Um, damn. I'm, for such a long time, Spider-Man was so much higher than that because for like the most part of 2021, it was like fives and sixes. Then it was hitting sevens and eights and nines. And now it's issue one of Ben Riley Spider-Man, uh, Scotty Young variant cover. I always get the Scotty Youngs because I have that on order months in advance for, from my favorite shop. Um, love them. I know, you know, I said the restructuring, but they really do take care of me. Um, this is a series about Ben Riley, which I loved. So this is set in the original 90s Clone Saga. And then after Clone Saga, you had uh, Ben Riley, the spectacular or Ben Riley, sensational Spider-Man. I think he was either I think he was the sensational Spider-Man was his title. And then it was um, uh, just Ben. Ben Riley Spider-Man or Spider-Man Ben Riley, whatever. He had his own title where he was Spider-Man in the 90s when uh, Clones Conspiracy... No, that's later on. So it's just uh, Clone Saga happens and you get the stuff with Kane, you get the stuff with Peter, and who's the real Peter Parker? Who's the real Spider-Man? Uh, this is the aftermath of that. This is Ben really questioning who he is as a person. Like, he is there, but it's done really well. There's therapy... therapy elements in this done a lot better than in there oh, the artwork in here is incredible um i like the dialogue not too much action there's maybe one fight scene but it was really cool uh coloring great i can't wait for the rest of this i know the next cover looks a little sus but i'm very excited for it uh this is a solid nine out of ten great issue i had a lot of fun with that Another Scotty Young, number one, we have She-Hulk. Um, I picked this up because it was a really cool Scotty Young cover. I pick up most Scotty Young covers, unless they're just, you know, a color with a character not doing anything. At least here, it's a color background with him doing something cool. Uh, sometimes it's just them just on a color background doing a weird pose without, like, any effects or weapons or nothing. It's just weird. This is awesome. So I picked it up because of that, and I thoroughly enjoyed this book. Um, I'm hoping the series continues. I am going to pick up the... I had taken this off my pull list for the foreseeable future. But now I have to re-add it because the first issue was just a lot of fun. You know, um, you really get a, some really thought-provoking, deep character development uh, with She-Hulk. Um... Whatever happened in her last series or last event, um, she's now able to be human all the time and turn into the She-Hulk whenever she feels like it. Um, but she doesn't. She hasn't had a job in years, so she is a registered lawyer. She is an attorney. She's you know somehow finesse getting a, a job at a firm that someone's only hired her because they don't want to have to compete against her in court. They don't want to face off against her, so they've hired her just to keep, stop that from being a problem. Um, she doesn't have a place to live. So she's now living with in an apartment owned by, uh, Wasp, which is really cool. She's been there before, you know, you see the element her and Titania. I think that's how it said, uh, become really good friends and are now like going to be like spawn partners where they're going to fight each other to relieve the stress. And everything about this issue was just a lot of fun. You end on a nice cliffhanger that wasn't too stupid. This was another 9 out of 10. It was just a perfect issue. I couldn't have written this better if I was dreaming. Um, we have issue 3 of The Hulk by Donny Cates. Um, She-Hulk Hulk. 
this was solid. Um, I know a lot of people are complaining about what's going on. This is weird. Why is he doing this? This makes no sense. This is so strange. No one asked for this. This is cool. This is a cool book. This is a cool concept. Um, this is unique. This is original. You've never seen anything like this in 10, 20 years from now. People are going to be like, yo, check out this trade paperback of Donny Cates run on Hulk. And people are going to be like, what the hell? And it's going to blow minds. This will never make it into a movie, but it will definitely blow minds. Um, so yeah, Hulk is still the body of Hulk, but with all the machines on it. So he's controlled like a spaceship because the psyche of corrupted like mental break banner is inside his head looking through like his eyes controlling the body through like this ship setup so his psyche is controlling hulk's body and then hulk's psyche is thrown into the, what he's calling the engine room and is being forced to fight through all these crazy danger room scenarios right now it's giant wolverines um and so that he's angry, so the anger fuels the transformation, so he stays as the Hulk, but he has no control over the Hulk's actions. It's Banner piloting the brain and using the machines, the machinery around him to control the body. I think that's awesome concept. I love how we're in like the multiverse, we're with another Banner, all this really cool stuff. I'm not going to spoil this book because I suggest people will jump into it and give it a shot and really think. It's thought-provoking. It is a solid 8.5 out of 10. And we're on to DC. Finally, I told you. Crazy. I'm going to try to cut this down. It's It sucks because I'm picking up these books and I don't want to pick up these this many. But then I read them and I really like them. And I put, put them on the list because I think I'm going to like them and then I like them. Or they're connected to an event that I'm reading. So I'm like, oh, I want to know what's going on. Uh, that's why a lot of the the Devil's Reign stuff I'm going to not be getting. Because it doesn't seem like it's that necessary. It just seems like it's it tells... They're like three issue series for some reason instead of one shots. And they tell a story that's like in line with the event. But doesn't really have anything to do with the event. Issue 39 of Catwoman. This is the start of Tinny Howard's run on Catwoman. This is her first ongoing series with DC. She had her first DC debut debut uh, at the end of December with the Batman Urban Legends uh, story of uh, Nightwing and the Batgirls holiday special. That was really good. I loved it. She is in here. This is her first story. She's really set up the character on this new story arc. She has cleansed uh, Alleytown, her home, that she bought this giant building, whatever, and the stray kids now run it that she's trained and taught them how to live life. And she trusts the villains that are now like heroes there and they've gotten rid of crime and she saved it. She's now going back to Gotham because she wants to take on real crime she wants to do real stuff she wants to feel important and like she's the best like she knows she is and you get a new side character which we don't really know that much about we get a shiny cat we get um her being herself which is awesome uh and you get some villain stuff she's trying to take down and black mask really really strong strong intro into a new story arc uh this is an eight out of ten Fantastic artwork, fantastic storyline. I'm really enjoying it. Can't wait to see what Titty Howard does with that. Jumping into the last book I have for this week, issue 88, cardstock cover. That was the cardstock cover, by the way. This is the cardstock cover of issue 88 of Nightwing. Holy crap. So we're finally back to where we were before all these events and these spinoffs and these cool things. Um... Nightwing inherited all this money from uh, Alfred. He went on TV publicly announcing that he is going to be using that money to give back to the community of Bloodhaven and take over Bloodhaven and recreate it and make it crime free and make it a great haven to live in. Right? Uh, he's starting the Alfred Pennywise Foundation. He's going to take where all these kids were living in tents and turn it into like uh, a giant community center to take care of these people. Um, his, the mayor is his half sister, uh, but the mob bosses that have always bickered with him 
are hiring hits to take him down and trying to kill him and trying to kill uh, Barbara Gordon and try to kill his dog. So that was the last issue was this crazy montage of that. But now we're here and there's assassins going after and there's people going after. And guess what? The Teen Titans show up. Holy crap. That was great. Artwork in this book was incredible. Redondo did an amazing job. This cardstock cover is awesome. I'm loving everything about this series. This is a Tom Taylor series. Every week, I just can't... Every week, there's a Tom Taylor series, I feel like. And it's they're amazing. The only series that isn't is Super Bo- Superman. Um, John Kent. I'm not really into it anymore. I tried to get into it. I did kind of enjoy it. But it wasn't enjoyable enough for me to buy it every month. It's just... The enjoyability did not live up to the price point, and that's it. Uh, this is a 9 out of 10. Those are my picks for the week. Oh, sorry. Hit the button when I pulled these off. Uh, those are my picks for the week. Solid picks. A lot of Marvel stuff. Um, showed you guys the omnibus and the trade paperback. Uh, really appreciate it. Do me a huge favor and... Uh, Follow and subscribe on Twitch at Violent Casket. Uh, fo- subscribe, like, and comment on YouTube at The Violent Casket. Hit the bell. Let me know what your pick of the week was. Let me know what you guys are into. Uh, follow my Instagrams at Violent Casket and Violent Casket Comics. Remember that Tuesday, it's Thursday, but this upcoming Tuesday, we will be posting on YouTube the next episode of the Weekly Roundup. Featuring myself, uh, Omni City Comics on Instagram, and Manny Reads Comics on Instagram and YouTube uh, and TikTok. Uh, check them out. Check out our their first two episodes that are on Manny and my channels on YouTube right now. Um, and remember to stay lame.